My dudes, what is up? We have talked filming, now we're talking editing. Editing. It's pretty important. You can film all you want, but without some editing, you're gonna have nothing put together. There are a couple reasons I put off making this video for so long. One is I'm trying to develop a personal style. I'm still working on what I want my videos to look like and feel like. I feel I've, I, I've got a good idea for that, but I mean, every video, I'm still developing that. Number two is that there's an infinite, uh, so many different ways to edit. I'm not saying mine is better than anyone else's. It's just what works for me. So hopefully through this video, you'll be able to take one or two or maybe a couple Couple different things that I do and make them your own. Let's get into it. So step number one is forgetting that my messy closet is here. Let's, you and me both will forget that never happened. Step number 1.5 is going to be organizing your footage. Organization is something that I have needed to get better at over time. I used to just dump all my footage into a folder called like ASDF and then I would delete it right after I finish it. But with all the projects I have going on and all that stuff, I've needed to improve. I'll start off with a folder. So for example, the Costa Rica trip, I named it Costa Rica. Go inside and I have all the different days laid out. So for example, Playa Negra Serp, that is when we're at Playa Negra. I open that, I have all of my camera's footage on here. And then I have in two separate folders, the drone footage and the GoPro footage. So then after that, I will open up Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the editing software I use. I sometimes use After Effects, but I'm gonna say 98% of the work I do is all Premiere Pro. Inside Premiere, I will make a new project and label it whatever. I will drag Playa Negra Surf into Premiere Pro. Now comes the part I switch things up. So whether I'm editing a tutorial or one of my vlogs or a cinematic compilation video, I kind of have a different system for all of them. We'll start with the vlog. So I would open up the folder and then I have all of my footage nicely organized in here. Um, I didn't used to do this, it used to be a pain to go through it all, it slow me down a lot. So organization not only helps you keep things so you can find them, but it helps speed up your workflow quite a bit, which is helpful. With everything imported, I start by organizing things through frame rate. I do this because I film in two frame rates, 24 frames per second and slow motion in 60. Organizing by frame rate just really allows me to split the two up and differentiate between narrative and cinematic shot. Next is importing things from the bin into the timeline. So I'll grab just one clip filmed in 24 frames per second. That is very important because this will set your timeline settings. After that, you can just delete that out of there. You don't need it. But now that your sequence is set up, now you set the foundation. The foundation of my vlogs is the narrative. That is the foundation and then cinematics are supporting. So I will start by selecting the first clip of 24 frames per second. This is why we organize by frame rate. And then I will select the last clip of 24 frames per second just by clicking shift and the last clip has them all selected. Then I go to automate to sequence and click OK, which pulls everything, all of the 24 frames per second talking narrative clips into the timeline. Now you can go through and splice together the parts that you want. To do that is quite simple. There's two main shortcuts I use, Q and W. So Q will delete everything behind your scrubber. So my scrubber is right here, let's say right when I grab the bag, I'll press Q and that will delete everything before that point. Now I want it to stop right there, so I'll press space to pause and press W, that deletes everything after that point. Super, super easy to go and clean up the foundation of your vlog and bring it down to only the parts that you want in it. Um, I'm not gonna do that here because I've actually edited this video and uploaded it to the channel, so I do not need to do that again. But uh, you get the gist of it. Let's say this is good, this is perfect, this is exactly what you want. Now it's time to start adding the cinematic touch. Still being organized by frame rate, I scroll down past the 24 frames per second clips and start with the 60. So as you can see, I start at clip six and I look at them until there's a break. So it goes all the way to clip 20, then there's a break and then it goes to clip 28. That break means that on the camera when I was shooting, I shot clip six through 20 in sequence and then I switched the camera to 24 frames per second did a bit of talking, switched it back to uh, 60 and started at clip 28. We'll pull clips one by one. So pull clip six and just throw it in the timeline somewhere. You can press command R to slow motion it. 40% uh, speed if you're exporting in 24 frames per second, which we are. And now you have the entire clip in slow motion. I also press G and then type in some negative figure, like negative 40, just to mute the audio. And then I go through this, skim through, and use the QW trick to pick out the part that I like. 
will say I really like this part right where it comes into focus and I back out. Sure. QW, clip to that. Now I'm going to finish going through all of these and pull together the buffet is what I like to call it. All of the good parts of the clips. All right, that is done. The buffet is ready. All of the good parts are in the timeline now ready to be taken. Another way that you can bring clips into the timeline, I do it sometimes. Um, I definitely do the other way more, but this way also works is you double click a clip um, and then find the place in the source monitor that pops up. Find where you want it to start. Press I to pull up your endpoint and then press O to pull up your out point. Then you can just drag the source monitor right onto the timeline and it will only bring that part of the clip, not the entire thing, just that part. Um, it's handy sometimes, but again, whatever works for you. No matter which way you do it, you will have your buffet of clips. And then from here, you can go through and choose and put on your plate what you would like to present. I always like to start out with some good old music. By the way, um, I find my music through SoundCloud. I have some artists I like, and then I go through their related stuff to find new artists that I like. I find that works pretty well. I have some music on my computer though. Um, I'll bring that in to the bin, drag it onto the timeline, and then I will edit to the song usually. So if you haven't seen my cinematic video, click it up here, you can check that out. That video will go a lot more in depth on creating the cinematics, but I really like to look for movement, um, motion, color, uh, continuity, story, stuff like that. So that's what I think of when I'm editing, but I also edit to the music. So if there's a uh, kick or a snare or a hi-hat or a drop of a beat or something, I often go to that to just create uh, interest. I go through and uh, now that I have all my clips laid out, I will see, okay, let's start it right here. Kind of mysterious and dark. Pull that to the front. Awesome, that works well there. Now what's important is that you lock your audio layer. So whatever it's on, just lock it while you do this. And this will allow you to QW without deleting the song below it. Um, if you don't lock it, you're gonna delete snippets of the song and it's gonna mess everything up. So we'll go through that. After that clip, sure, let's throw my mom and dad driving. Also note that I don't slow motion everything. Um, I often like to keep some things fast to emphasize the fastness, the moving aspect of things. It's all a creative decision and you, by, by doing this a lot, the more and more ideas you get and different ways of doing things. But again, this is just my system and the way I've taught myself doing things. Perfect, so let's say that is done. That is my finished cinematic sequence. I will take the rest of that stuff and just press delete, bye-bye. Um, of course, like I said, I've edited this video so I'm not re-editing the entire thing but that is the gist of the cinematic sequence. I'll usually leave some audio left on the tail end and put a constant power on that to give it a fade out effect um, into the next round of talking, the next um, round of dialogue. And that is almost done. That is almost a complete cinematic sequence, but one thing that I do that just makes that buttery smooth slow motion, and a lot of people ask about actually, is uh, apply warp stabilizer to it. This is a plugin inside Premiere Pro. It's amazing, I love it so much. Lots of people use it. And um, it allows you to just get that last bit of shake out of the camera. So by applying warp stabilizer, if I just apply it to this clip right now, the slow motion clip, it's not gonna work. It says warp stabilizer and speed cannot be used on the same clip. There's a trick around that. You can nest the sequence. So if you right click, scroll down, and go to doo -doo -doo -doo, nest and then just click enter. You don't need to name it, but uh, this will nest the clip and by nesting it, you're able to warp stabilizer it and it's fine. Now with that warp stabilizer applied, that shot is buttery smooth. Um, I would go through and I will nest this one. I have that on a shortcut as well. A warp stabilizer that, do that one as well. Stabilize all of this. So with some warp stabilizer thrown on that, all of these clips are looking buttery smooth. They're looking perfect. That is the way I like it. I will go and select that sequence, click Command C to copy, delete it from there because we don't need it sticking outside of our timeline. I will go into the timeline and find the gap of clips. So see clip number five to clip number 21. That lines up with our slow motion of clip number six to clip number 20. So I'll press A, to bring up my select forward tool, select clip 21, and that selects everything in front of it. Pull that to the side, 
paste our cinematic sequence right in there, click the space and delete it, and now we have a fully functioning cinematic vlog. Oh, look at that, buttery smooth. That is it guys, that is the cinematic sequence done. On top of that, I will add sound effects. Um, that is very, very important uh, to, to kind of sell the effect, to sell that someone's actually there and, and really tell the story. Sound effects help a lot. If I go into my magical folder of sound effects, I can pull out this one, let's see, flag in the wind. And that will give us some wind. So I'll just cut it to the, uh, the places that I want it to play. So I want some wind in there, maybe not in the car, but when we go out here, sure. There we go. I will often add more layers of sound and more complex sounds, depending on how much time I have. That is the vlog. The final thing that I do is color correct, and that is quite simple. I just go to make an adjustment layer by clicking the new layer, um, let it take the settings of the sequence, which it automatically has. Then I drag this out to cover all of the entire sequence. And then I apply the effect Lumetri Color. Lumetri Color, just drag and drop it. Lumetri Color allows you to add LUTs. A LUT is a set of color settings very similar to something in Lightroom like a preset if you've ever used that. I put it on an adjustment layer so I can apply the LUT to everything below the adjustment layer. So having that, it's just a blanket across all of my clips. To do that, you just click basic correction, input LUT, you go like that, you can browse, and you can browse your computer for LUTs. Um, to find LUTs, you can find them online. Some are free, a lot are paid, so use your judgment in that. It's very simple to use, it's just usually you have to pay for them. Okay, the vlog is done. To edit tutorials like this, I'm not going to show you guys because if you can edit the vlog, you can edit the tutorial. I just have one camera, one screen recorder, and that's it. It's very simple. Just a matter of matching up audio. The last thing I do is my how to travel series, um, my two minutes in a country series, any compilation of traveling I do, all of that stuff. That takes quite a bit more time. That is why those videos are fewer and far between. I like to make them the special thing I do. This is the timeline to one of my most recent cinematic videos. Uh, my two minutes in Costa Rica. It is like a minute and 47 seconds in length. It's, it's not that long, but it took me like two days to edit. And that is not because it's super complex or complicated. It is just, it's very time consuming, especially going through two weeks of footage and trying to find the best parts. So there's a system I have and a system that I use to get through that and make stuff like this. And it is my favorite thing to do when I have a ton of footage that I have to bomb through. What I do is go to File, New, Sequence, and I create a sequence with the exact same settings, click OK, and then I drag it down to the bottom here. So I have two timelines on top of each other. With the two timelines, I use the top one for the final video, the final product, what it's going to look like, and I use the bottom one for organizing my footage. So painstakingly, this is why it took so long. I went through every single day, so I think I filmed like eight or nine days total there. I took all of the 60 frames per second, all of the cinematic footage I took, and I threw it in the bottom timeline along with drone footage and GoPro footage. So all of the stuff that isn't dialogue and talking that pertains to that day, I threw in the bottom timeline and sorted through it all. With it all in the timeline, I just used Q and W and I went through all of it and picked out the very best parts, my favorite parts. And that is like 20, almost 20 minutes of footage of only the good parts. That's my buffet to work with, 20 minutes of footage. Prior to me cutting it up and taking all the good parts, it was like three hours, like a three hour timeline of footage I had to go through. So that took a very long time. But after you go through that, you become familiar with the clips. You know what kind of stuff you have to work with. So if you have a clip that pushes in, you should be able to remember after clipping through three hours of stuff that, oh yeah, there's another clip of me pushing in um, somewhere and you go searching for that you find that sure enough by scrubbing through this 20 minutes of good footage You start to remember the kind of stuff you have to work with and um, 
it allows you to tell your story better. From there, it's a matter of choosing your story, choosing what you want to portray, what you want to represent, what you're going for. I decided I wanted to tell the story of the trip. I wanted to follow my sister and my mom and my dad and myself, our journey through Costa Rica, and that is exactly what I did. So I got the song, I laid it down, I cut the song to the way I wanted it to play. Oftentimes I will edit the song and rearrange it to better fit the video. So what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll find the part, for example, maybe a rise or, or something that's building up to something that I want to continue. You just need to find a part that is similar and kind of repeats itself. And if it repeats itself even once, you're able to copy that and duplicate it as many times as you want and it flows smoothly. And it works the exact same for reorganizing the song. So if there's a buildup and then it crashes, if there's another point in the song where it crashes, you're able to take that crash and put it right beside this buildup if that makes any sense. So that is what I often do to songs to just better help them flow with the video is I reorganize them. You have your story, you have exactly what you wanna tell, you have your song, you have it cut and organized appropriately. Now you're able to use your buffet of clips, your entire bin, and you're able to apply it to your song and the story you wanna tell. So in this sense, there's really no method to the madness, it's just you kinda of go for it. You can watch my cinematic tips video on things I look for, like I said, motion, movement, color, story, um, anything that just helps continuity, I look for all of that stuff. And then it just comes down to you gotta try, you gotta mess with it, and you gotta see what works for you, what works together. So taking a closer look at the timeline, you can see all of the nested sequences, all of the green things from me just warp stabilizing, slow down clips, we explained that already. Um, one thing that I haven't explained is speed ramping. So what speed ramping is, is a very simple effect that is very effective. Basically it just creates perpetual motion that kind of launches you into the next clip and it's a very good transition. I use it very frequently. That's all of these lines that you can see right here. So basically if you just zoom in on your timeline and expand your track, your video track, and then click the clip you want, the FX tab with a right click right there, go to time remapping speed that will bring up this line and this line affects speed. So currently this clip plays normal speed. If I were to drag the line up to 200, it would play at 200% speed. So you can see this clip flies by a lot faster. What you can do is use keyframes now. So you can keyframe right there, right near the end of the clip, speed that up. With a keyframe, it will only speed up after it. Then you can use your Alt key and just drag the video clip so it fills out the rest of the time. And now when I play it through, it'll play normal speed and speed up right after the keyframe and kind of launch us into the drone clip. So it's very subtle, but you can see that it speeds up quite a bit. If I, if I do it some more, it'll be more apparent but right there, you can see it kind of launches us into the next clip. Likewise, you can do it on the following clip by doing the exact same thing right near the end, speed it up, we go here, speed it up, and then Alt to drag it to fill it. And now this will be create a speed up and then speed down. Very subtle again, but it works. It's an effect that works very well. Those are the fundamental, the fundamental things I use to make my videos. Everything else is just extra on top, um, but that is just the baseline how I do it. A quick thing, a lot of people have asked me how I do the opening door effect. I'm gonna cover this very quickly because you can YouTube it and figure out how. But um, the, it just uses the principle of masking. It's just masking out things, which is going frame by frame and kind of drawing in what you want to happen. I would take this plain door clip, me opening a door, and I would cut out, when I open the door, I cut out everything that I'm seeing. Um, and I use the pen tool in the under the opacity tab to create a mask. So clicking the door, I would go over to when it first opens and then click the pen tool and draw a mask around the door opening. Then I go one frame ahead and make the mask bigger as the door opens more and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is just going to cut out the inside of the door. And since that's cutting out, usually it would just be black in the middle of the door because I'm cutting it out. But because I put a clip below the door clip, it gives something to look onto. So it creates the illusion that I'm opening the door into the jungle, even though that's impossible. <sighs> Hours later, my voice hurts. This was a very long video. I, I had to refilm parts multiple times. I actually started recording at like, I don't know, 1.30 and it's four. So quite a long record time later, finally done. I really, really hope I was able to provide you guys with something, provide you guys with some knowledge, and uh, just further help you on 
editing videos. And of course, I'm no professional. I'm still learning every single day. I say that all the time, but it's true. Every video I make, I try to learn one new thing. And that's what I encourage you guys to do. Whenever you make something, it doesn't have to be a video or photo or anything like that, but just always try to one up yourself. Try to improve and learn something new. And that is honestly how I've learned all of this. I didn't go to school. I didn't do any of that but I have spent a very long time researching, learning, watching videos, reading tutorials, all that stuff. So hopefully I was able to provide my two cents into your editing go abouts and hopefully you can add something to your style that uh, I've helped you with. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you so much. I'm gonna go drink water because my throat hurts a lot and I'll see you in another one.